Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, the dorky token black guy that's just trying to get by. And welcome to another edition of Kaijun! So, for the rest of the month of June, I will predominantly be talking about and reviewing traditional kaiju movies. What is a traditional kaiju movie? Well, in my opinion, a traditional kaiju movie is a giant monster movie that is created, funded, and shot in Japan. And I am concluding Kaijun with the brave, invincible, guardian of Earth, and friend to all children, Gamera. Alright? So, two scientists and a reporter are headed for a scientific exhibition in the U.S. territory in the Arctic. Nearby the expedition, uh, four unidentified aircraft fly into restricted U.S. airspace and ignore communication attempts made by the Americans. One of the unknown aircraft fires at an American jet and the jet, in uh, defensive retaliation, guns down one of the aircraft. The pilot of the jet, however, is not aware that these aircraft are carrying low-grade atomic bombs that explode on impact and create a seismism that releases and awakens a giant prehistoric turtle that is headed for Japan. Gamera is a well-known kaiju among kaiju fans. However, in the general public, he is not really as well-known as Godzilla is. One of the reasons why he's a little more known is because in, during, the, uh, during the 90s in Mystery Science Theater 3000, a lot of times they used Gamera and riffed on Gamera films. Hence, one of the reasons why Gamera, while popular, is kind of divisive among kaiju fans. Because compared to Godzilla, most of his movies are not really that good. However, me personally, I was made aware of Gamera when I was 16. When I was watching a lot of, where I started to watch some of the other Heisei Godzilla movies. And as well as start watching other kaiju movies directly from Japan as well as got became a little more known about things that happened in Japan like with video games and martial arts and TV shows on channel 31 you know so this movie itself you know when it was meant to rival Godzilla King of the Monsters how does it stack up well let's start with the kaiju himself Guys, we gotta be honest. Gamera as a kaiju himself is freaking awesome. I mean, come on. Giant turtle. Huge tusk at the bottom of his lip. You know, now they don't show these in his in this movie, but he has spike tusks that come out of his elbows. Cool, alright? And, you know, he not only breathes fire, well, it's fire here, but later you find out... It's highly concentrated plasma. But anyway, he breathes fire, but also eats fire. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, it gets better. As a turtle, he's able to retract in his shell. But here's the cool thing. When he retracts in his shell, freaking rockets come out. And he's able to spin around and freaking fly. Yo, so from a design perspective and abilities perspective, camera it's freaking awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> now, let's go to the movie itself. As I explained in the plot, there are two scientists and a reporter that are going on an expedition in the Arctic. Now, the reason they go on this expedition is because they're trying to study Gamera. However, when you learn more about Gamera's origins, when I do with my franchise review of him, Begs to the question, how did they come about knowing him? And how did they know to go on an expedition in the Arctic to study or try to find Gamera? Does it really make sense? Now, so, yeah, the plot kind of weak. There's a few holes in this plot. In addition, we have, the, we have a lot couple of the characters now here's where it hits and misses you know you know we got the lead character dr hidaka and his 
lead assistant, you know, Kyoko. Now, I gotta mention something about kaiju movies. I'm noticing that in kaiju movies, they were very progressive with females. Like, you know, the women were mostly, they were mostly like photographers or some of them would be reporters themselves. And in here, while Kyoko is like Dr. Uh, what you call Hidaka's assistant, she is frequently referred to as doctor because she is actually a respected zoologist as well as Dr. Hidaka and everything. So I have to give Japan big ups for this. But as interesting as both of these characters are to a degree, they kind of end up being walking expositions. And, you know, they don't get as much developed development. They're interesting people you see as they interact with each other, but when they interact with other people and everything, it's just paper thin, you know. We have another supporting character named Ayoko, you know, who is, uh, what you would call him, well, not Ayoko, Ay Ayaki, my fault, Ayaki, who is a photographer himself, and he went on expedition with them, and he feels that he owes Dr. Hidaka and Kyoko a life debt because when Gamera first appeared, there were other photographers and reporters on the ship, and he won a bet to go on the expedition with them. And when he went on the expedition with them, uh, he survived compared to the other reporters and photographers that were on the ship that Gamera destroyed. Okay. <sighs> Let's get to... Oh, God. Uh, let's get to Toshio. Now, I am not one of these people that hates on child characters or child actors. You know, I'm able to put myself in... I'm able to remember how I was as a kid and try to put myself in a kid's shoes when you're in a movie and everything. You know, you're still developing, you're still learning some things, so you can't really expect a kid to be a great actor. You know, it can happen, but it is kind of unrealistic to be like, oh, I hate kid characters. You know, kid characters are so annoying. People, kids are kind of annoying to a degree. They're a blessing, but they can be kind of annoying, so you can't expect them to be as cool as adult characters or as three-dimensional, you know, you really can't, you know, not all child actors are going to be like the kids from Stranger Things, or the kids from Stand By Me, or Dakota Fanning, or how Drew Barrymore was when she was a kid, you know, you can't expect that all the time, you know. With that said, though, Toshio was so aggravating and annoying. I can understand. I can relate to a degree because as a kid, I was by myself a lot, and I didn't really have many friends. And you know, so what this kid did as his coping mechanism was he would play with his friend Turtle. And when he was forced to toss his turtle out, you know, that kind of did like you know depress and break him. And that I can understand and everything. And when he threw his turtle out in a particular area. Gamera came, and he feels a bit of a connection with Gamera. All that I can get. But here's the thing. Kid put himself in danger way too much, and not whimsically. You know, not the, like, you know, mischievous kid just trying to get some action and everything. No. Right when he sees Gamera, he's scared. And then he initially runs to a lighthouse where Gamera destroys the lighthouse, almost killing him. But when he falls, Gamera saves him and puts him on the ground. I'll get into that in a little bit. But ever since then, he was like, oh, Gamera's good. He's just alone. Don't hurt him. He saved my life and everything. Yo, there's a point to empathizing with a monster. But then when you see him constantly destroying everything around you and killing other people, how you cannot say that this thing is misunderstood and good because 
it's just laying waste of people. And he just injects himself in the worst times, trying to cause collateral, additional collateral damage. Hell, when he injects himself into things and everything, it's like, yo, kid, I understand, I understand and everything. It's cute, it's cute, it's cute. No, people, he's interfering with government uh, government emergency issues, all right? He's putting himself in danger. He's putting other people in danger by trying to stop you. What you do is you lock him up and restrict him and keep him away instead of saying, all right, go to your family, go to your family. No. And he was trying to ruin a lot of plans that they'd made to try to stop Gamera from destroying, pe from destroying cities and killing people. Ugh. <sighs> yeah, this kid was really annoying and he was very aggravating. There's a reviewer actually called Brendan Tilden. He has a name for kids like this and he calls them Kennys and everything, you know. This kid was definitely a Kenny, all right? By the way, Brendan Tilden is awesome. If you guys haven't, check him out. I'll put my, I'll put a link of his down below. Anyway, so those were the so the paper thin plot and the characters are not the only issues in this movie. Another issue are the special effects. Now, for example, there's a reason why people say like kaiju movies look like toy models and everything. Because this movie, the cars, the planes, the buildings, they definitely look like toy models. You know, so you can't complain. So it's hard to defend that. But at the same time as well, too, you know, the cinematography kind of, uh, you know, it looks like they're on set most of the time. Vast majority of the time, which is bad. And, you know, I know this movie came out in 1965, but movies are being shot in color more so around that time. Why was this shot in black and white? Yeah, I can't say. So, you know, as a start, as an intro to the Gamma series and everything, and as a movie that was supposed to rival Godzilla, this fails. You know, as a movie on its own, you know, bland characters, cheesy special effects that are very distracting, uh, an annoying kid that just won't shut up and everything you know, really bring the movie down. What makes a movie great to watch and everything, if you're already a kaiju fan or if you're becoming a kaiju fan, the concept and design of Gamera is pretty cool and some of his abilities are awesome and the destruction scenes, while, you know, the models are kind of fake and everything, the destruction scenes are epic and whenever Gamera's around and when he's out there, you know, you are really focused on him and you want to see him wreak havoc. So, with all that said, all I can say is Gamera, the giant monster, it's alright. You know, it hurts me saying that it's alright because I love this movie and I love the character Gamera, you know, but, you know, for it's the bad outweighs the good here. You really gotta be a kaiju fan to have great appreciation for this. Agree? Disagree? Drop me a comment. Give me a like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you will immediately know when a new video loads. But I hope you guys enjoyed kaiju and everything. This will be an ongoing thing every June from this day forth. Alright? So, until then, this has been Token Dave, the dorky token black guy just trying to get by. I'll catch you guys later.